All right, we're back at the hotel room. It's the next morning. Mom's about to leave. Trying to. Why are you leaving, Mom? Um, have to go to work tomorrow. Otherwise, I'd stay. The work thing. There she is. Getting into the car. There she goes. And just like that, there goes my car. Boots off, boots are off. Now it's time to nap. Probably not gonna nap, probably just gonna lay around and watch freaking YouTube, catch up on all that, because I've been super late in the game. Because I've been having, I've had to hang out with family and friends and Here I am, I had a bit of a nap. Bit of a nap, yeah. After mom left, I'm really tired. Um, waiting for lunch, but as the Americans say, never wait for anything that can be easily taken. So in the spirit of America and all of my ancestors, I will take what is rightfully mine. Can I be real with y'all? It's actually not that bad out right now. It's sunny, there's no real wind, and there's like no traffic on the roads. So this is pretty decent. Look at that. Look at that trigger. Oh, trigger. Look at that. Yeah, that's, that's a big truck. Pretty loud. Not very conducive for vlogging. I hope I'm in focus. I've got two issues right now. My first issue is that I'm wearing gloves. Boom. Second issue is I'm wearing sunglasses. It's very hard to tell whether I'm in focus right now. And part of the reason the gloves are an issue is not because I can't focus this with my hands, but because I can't move the screen out to the side, so I can't see whether I've got myself in focus or not. Whoa, I'm gonna be on one of those in a little bit. So, I feel like now is the best time to talk about experiences I've had while being frostbitten on my way to the ground round. So this one time, the first time I got frostbite, it wasn't real frostbite. It was like, uh, what do you call it? Frost nip. That's the thing you get right before you experience tissue damage and uh, nerve damage, real nerve damage. So basically I was up skating with a couple of my cousins and the ice started to melt a little bit and my gloves became wet. It was still like, it was about this temperature, it was about negative three Fahrenheit up there. And uh, as we were skating around at the speed of sound, much like my boy Shadow the Hedgehog, we, my fingers became increasingly cold. Now I didn't think that was a big deal because I lived in Canada at the time, and I was like, you're gonna be cold in the winter time. You know, it's not that big of a deal. However, it became increasingly apparent when I tried to untie my skates, and I had no fine motor skills anymore, that maybe there was an issue. So, what I ended up having to do was I almost had to get my buddy, my cousin, to untie my skates for me. And he's like, no, man, up, you can do it. Because he didn't think anything of it either because my fingers looked pretty normal. I got them back to the house and they were freaked. My fingers were messed, man. Uh, I didn't end up going to the hospital over that, but I did end up spending a lot of time inside after that. I'm here, I'm at the ground round. Look at that, food. All right, done for lunch, ground round. It was awesome, it was lit. Best food ever. Now, that story about the second time I got frostbite goes a little something like this. Basically, me and my buddies always had a uh, New Year's Eve tradition of meeting up at my house. Let me turn off this freaking TV real quick. Meeting up at my house and having a bit of a shindig. Now, nothing too 
crazy because we were all, you know, really good kids. We always met up and we always had a lot of fun. Now, about the time we hit about grade seven, we started a tradition in my house with my, with my bros. There was about four of us at the time. One of them has made it with me to adulthood while still being very close friends with me. The rest of them have um, moved on to bigger and better things. However, aside from that super depressing story, we've got, you know, Josh, he used to do this as well. Sorry, Josh, uh, gonna rat on you a little bit here. We used to strip down to nothing but our boxers and run uh, through the snow to ring in the new year. Now that was um, fun and all. However, one year when it was just Josh, I guess two other guys were there too. Not the regular two. There was one guy that, that had never been there before. It was his first time. And he wasn't as stupid as us, so he didn't really do it. And then the other guy didn't really do it either. But Josh and I were like, well, this is a tradition. We got to keep it up. We went in and we, uh, we uh, stripped down and we ran a lot farther than usual. However, we did not run mostly in the snow. Then we got back and we decided since we're out here, we're gonna light off a few fireworks um, because we thought it was funny. So we lit off a few fireworks, then ran back inside and we both looked at each other and we said, our feet are on fire, like they're burning, right? And uh, that was, wow, that was one of the weirdest sensations I've ever had in my entire life because it was freezing and, and your body knew it was freezing but at the same time it felt like it was too hot and you started to almost produce sweat because it, could, because it was so hot. So being the intelligent people we were, we thought okay let's gradually try to warm them up with cool water then warmer water then warmer water and we did that. That's probably why we didn't sustain too heavy of nerve damage from this but uh, anyways the night progressed and went on and on and on and we stayed up. I think that was the time we stayed up till 7 playing Black Ops 2. Um, no, it might have been Black Ops 1. I don't remember. It was one of the Black Ops. It wasn't 3 because 3 hadn't been out by that time. Eventually, we all passed out. The next day, I woke up and I started to walk around. I felt like something, I felt like I walked in something. It felt like something was stuck to the bottom of my feet. They were kind of sore, but it, it just felt like something was stuck to the bottom of my feet. And I kept on like brushing them against something and, you know, not really thinking anything of it. I walked out into the kitchen and Josh was laying with his hands like he was in a casket and on hard tile floor with nothing but two pizza boxes as a pillow. <laughs> Oh gosh, what a legend of a time that was. And I look at his feet, and his feet look pretty messed up, and I start to think, oh crap, do my feet look that bad? My feet actually looked worse. My feet actually had bits on them that were black and brown. Um, and it wasn't bruising, it was dead skin. Um, that was one of the freakiest experiences of my life, because I thought I might lose a piece of my toe, um, or worse, uh, you know, a toe or two. Um, I went into the doctors over that and we got myself cleared. Josh got cleared. His actually wasn't as bad. I don't know why his wasn't as bad. Maybe his feet were just, you know, more used to being beaten on because his, he, he's a runner. Um, but my feet just, you know, they didn't take that very well. The doctor told me, you know, I didn't have to get anything removed. Just watch for infection. Never infected. So that is my story of uh, the worst, one of the worst things ever happened to my feet. Now, while on the topic of feet, let's just keep going. I got a picture to back this one up, too. Y'all know the Parang from Bear Grylls. Um, it's uh, made by Gerber. I used to call myself the Parang Tang while using it. That's an old joke. It goes back with Josh and I like eight years. So I bought that thing while I was down in Texas because I was working at a vet clinic, the same vet clinic I actually removed this venomous snake from. Boom, 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 boom. Check that video out. We had to clear out a big area full of cedars, um, namely like salt cedars, the kind that, that come up out of, out of salt uh, marshes and stuff like that. And it's, you know, strong wood. And so I thought, okay, this is really good for hacking because it's got a lot of weight. It's very front heavy. And it was, it was amazing. The, the thing never bent on me, never chipped on me, never broke on me while I was doing that. Fast forward, uh, I think it was not that Christmas, but two Christmases later, I still have the thing. It's not rusted out. It's not really bent or broken or anything like that. Um, but I had to go retrieve a Christmas tree from the wilderness, uh, property owned by my aunt and uncle. And in order to get this Christmas tree, I had to go through some forest areas 
and we had a trail to go up and get and get Christmas trees, but it was it had all grown up because no one had been up there for a while. On my way up there, I, my sister wanted to come with me, so she came with me. Here's a here's a picture of that. Um, and as as we're going up there, I, I'm realizing that I need to clear out some of these areas. And as I'm going through these woods, I'm not really paying attention to what I'm doing, which number one, that's that's the bad thing right there. And I'm just kind of hacking at these things, get them out of the way, get them out of the way. As I'm going through all these trees, dad gummit, my sister said something, and it totally threw my mind off. And I come up to a tree about that thick, which should be five or six hits with this thing, really good hits in order to go through it. So I've got my, you know, my my numbers in my head. I've I've done the math. I've crunched the numbers, man. And I bring this sucker up, and I go th boom, and it chops really deep into it. But still, I'm thinking five or six hits, right? So I chop again, and then I chop again, and the third one goes through, and straight into my foot. And I just kind of stare at it for a second, and then the pain registers, and I, and I'm and I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, should I pull this thing out? And I pull it out, no blood comes spurting out, so that's, you know, that's the plus. But I hold onto my foot, and I, and I look up at my sister, and there's a, there's a big old hole in my, in, my, in my boot. There's a lot of pain coming from my big toe area. And I think, I just cut my toe off. And, <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and I just kind of drop the machete, and I look over at my sister, and, I, and I, she kind of goes, what, like, what? Because she didn't know what happened. And I say... I think I just cut my toe off in a very calm manner and I untie my boot and I pull off my boot and I was wearing white socks and they, it was, there was a little bit of blood but it wasn't anything crazy and I felt around my toe and it turns out it just went into the top of my foot and came out. It didn't actually penetrate too deep. Praise God for that. Anyways, later on that exact same day I, we find the Christmas tree that we want and I've got my hatchet to cut down this Christmas tree because the hatchet's a little bit more, uh, for me, a little bit more precise than a machete. So I bring up my, my hatchet and I'm starting to hack through this tree. You know, it was, it was about that thick. And I'm hacking through this tree and I don't realize that as I'm doing this, the hatchet is slipping slowly out of my fingers. Uh, I've got big old gloves on so I can't, really, I can't really feel that. And the bevel, the little thing that comes out at the end to prevent your hand from sliding off, had already gone past my, my pinky. I knew that. I'm just kind of used to that. I'm kind of used to using that as extra, you know, like a extra, you know what I'm saying? This thing came up and it was perched. I didn't feel it right on my, right on my ring finger. And I hit the thing and for some reason my hand just gives out and I, and I look and I pull my glove off and my finger, this ring finger is totally dislocated from, from my, my hand. And my sister and it was like kind of sideways and my sister looks at me and I look back at her and by this time I'm so fed up because it's now sleeting and it's gross out I've got a hole in my foot I'm sore I'm mad and I look at her and I just pop it right back in and like I kid you not I think a single tear like dramatically fell down my, my cheek and I just kept on hacking not with my left hand with my right hand because it would have hurt way too bad with my left hand am I becoming a story time youtuber frag me Anyways guys, leave your comments in the section below uh, as to what I should get to eat tonight because the food place inside the hotel room, inside the hotel is uh, closed and I don't really feel like walking that far again because that was about a mile worth of walking um, in this really, really cold weather and by the time it is going to be time to eat, I'm, I'm still hungry, why am I still hungry? By the time it's going to be time to eat tonight, it will be, wow positive three.